Good morning. Well, let's start out by praying for our sister church. Church of the Trinity today is welcoming their new pastor, Reverend Elder Lily Brock. It's a day of rejoicing for them, a, a day of transition, and uh, we welcome Reverend Lily into our community. I'm sure we'll all be going to the installation at some point in the next little while. So uh, let's open by praying for them. God, we thank you for Church of the Trinity, and we thank you for that congregation and for all the transition and time they've been through. We, we thank you that uh, Renee was a, a powerful and, and wonderful intern for them, and we give you thanks for Lily and uh, uprooting herself and coming to this community and uh, bringing um, her joy and bringing all that she has to offer them. Bless them today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the next several weeks, we'll explore what it means to follow Jesus, who is our leader, with our heart, our hands, our head, and our habits. To me, church, this church, is a place where we can nurture a healthy heart. Our calling is to be a place where hearts can be healed and we can put our hearts to use for God. I think that churches, communities of faith, are one of the few places where it is okay not to just be in our heads or focused on tasks, but to be really connected spiritually, where the health of our heart, our very being, and our relationships are the reason for our gathering. Really, there's no point even to being a church unless we can make a difference in people's hearts. Amen? Richard Smallwood wrote a song. I'll see if I can sing a line from it this morning. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. I heard in a new way this week that line, you are the heart of my contentment. As human beings, think of our hearts as the center of our identity, who we are. Did you hear that heartbeat? (laughs) All right. (laughs) Our heartbeat is the first sound our bodies produce. Inside us, they are a drumbeat of life. They are the first vibrations we feel or hear. Our mother's heartbeat. One of the wonders of creation is the heart, a muscle that is a pump. It pumps nutrients, oxygen, nourishing every cell in our bodies. It's the source probably of all rhythm, every drumbeat, all of music, our own heartbeat. It's what doctors look for in the womb for viability. It is what most often marks our death, the stopping of our heartbeat. Our mortal life is bordered between that first faint heartbeat and our last. And the human heart, early in human history, became a metaphor for so many things. For thousands of years, poets and writers, hymn writers, those who wrote the Bible, or contemporary Christian music, saw the heart as the center of self, about desire, honesty, courage, and of course, love. Hallmark created an empire for the human heart. (laughs) Just think of all those Valentines, cards on sale now, reminding you, you have to buy one. And then there are those bumper stickers, aren't there? Yes. I don't know if we got one that says, I love the Patriots, or I love the Rams, or I don't know what today, but amen. All right. They're just great, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, New Jersey, come on. I love Jesus. New York, all right. Yes, very good. There are a dozen metaphors, aren't they? 
hearts of gold, pour out your heart. I have my heart on my sleeve, setting your heart on something, being lighthearted, being heavy hearted, speaking from the heart, breaking my heart. In the contemporary reading we heard today, they say, in the heart is why. Your heart is home to your intention and motivation. It is core to who you are. Sometimes that means we need to have a change, a healing of our hearts, in order to be whole and healthy. 1 Corinthians 13 is a scripture I can hear over and over. I've heard it my whole life and never be tired of it. I never get tired of preaching from it. It's Paul's hymn about the heart of it all. Paul wrote the first letter to the Corinthians after he had fallen in love with Jesus and become the apostle of the heart set free. It wasn't always so. Paul, then called Saul, was part of the religious rite of his day. He was a fundamentalist, we might say, filled with rage, even hate about those different from him. His heart was all twisted up with a kind of religion that would persecute, that was all about following rules and about punishment. Paul was particularly incensed by this new sect of Christians. They had really gotten under his skin. They were so free of rules. They claimed to be all about love. They were going against everything he thought was right and he made it his personal mission to wipe them out. And then one day, while fuming, I'm sure, on that road to Damascus, he was confronted with a vision of Jesus himself. He was invited to take a new and dramatic path, to make Jesus his leader, to let in the love that he had persecuted. His heart was changed by Jesus and that early Christian community who loved and welcomed him when you think they would have been afraid or wanted to keep him away. He even became the chief advocate for drawing the circle of early, Christian, early Christianity wider and including the Gentiles, something the old Paul would never have tolerated. Paul stopped pushing love away and really let God in. Love is patient, he wrote, kind, not jealous or boastful. It rejoices in the right, not in wrongs. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Love, he knew, changes everything. It changed him, it changed his path, his life. Love changed everything for a man named Joseph Gilbert, who I met in 1973. In the 1960s, he was heterosexually married, a successful PR person for the city of Sacramento, California. But he had a secret, a secret of which he was ashamed. He was gay. He was also deeply religious, and did not want to create a scandal to hurt anyone in his family by coming out. He made a choice to express his heart and his sexuality in a private correspondence through letters sealed and sent through the U.S. mail. In those days, the U.S. Post Office and federal government saw that correspondence as a felony because it was homosexual in nature. They opened his private mail. He was arrested, publicly humiliated, lost his job and his family, and he was sent to prison for several years. When he got out, he was ruined, broke and broken. But someone told him of a metropolitan community church just starting in Sacramento, California. When he was welcomed, even as an ex-felon, which he told them right away, he was so moved that it healed him 
and helped him give his heart to God. Joseph Gilbert started the first prison ministry in MCC. I heard him speak about it in 1973. He had a file box full of letters from people all over the country who are LGBT and are in prison. It's hard for me to even imagine that he would risk writing letters to people in prison, but he did. I remember him reading some of those letters to us, tears streaming down his face. When the state of California refused to let our ministers visit some of those prisoners, Joseph and MCC sued them and won in federal court. Joe, you know, I thought we were the only church suing to get into prison. I think that is but <laughs> Joe's broken heart had healed enough that he could risk helping others who needed good news and hope. Love changed everything. By all outward appearances, Paul the Apostle's life did not get easier when he fell in love with Jesus. The realignment of his heart turned his life upside down. He wandered all over the world preaching surviving shipwrecks and jail, earthquakes, beaten. He lived hand to mouth sometimes, dependent on the kindness of strangers. But every day in serving God, in sharing Jesus, he was filled with joy and love. He was free of the rage and the need to push love away. Proverbs says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything flows from it. Extending the metaphor, I want to look at maybe three heart ailments that make us vulnerable. First, there's having a heart blockage. There are some of you who've survived that in this room, having clogged arteries. Sometimes meds can help this, but often open heart surgery is needed. You know, our spiritual hearts are sometimes blocked by pain, by fear, by disappointment, hurt, by betrayal. One of the great things about being part of a church community is that we can offer spiritual open heart surgery right here, right in this place. We all need it sometimes. We may not even realize the ways in which we've tried to protect ourselves from pain or hurt or disappointment, that we've allowed our hearts to be blocked. There was a saint in the 14th century, Saint Lutgard, I'd never heard of her, she had a vision of Jesus literally removing her heart and replacing it with his. Kind of the first heart transplant, spiritually. Her meditation on Jesus' heart became part of the Sacred Heart of Jesus devotion that is part of Catholic uh, spirituality. Sometimes we need a blockage to remove and sometimes we may need a transport, transplant, but God is able. Whatever happened to you, whatever you experienced that shut down love inside you, God is able to heal, to set your heart free. Touch your neighbor on the shoulder and say, God is able. <laughs> the second ailment is a problem with heart rhythm. We may not see, hear it, AFib or different things like that. Our heart goes zig when it should go zag. It's not in sync, it's out of sorts, it's too fast or too slow. Sometimes doctors even shock the heart into restarting, rebooting the heart, or they put in a pacemaker. Have you ever had times like that in an emotional sense where you're out of sorts? Where you're tired and just not feeling it? Maybe because of grief or other things, the world seems to go on, but I'm not in sync with it. Or maybe there's just a lot of change happening and I feel like I, I can't keep up and really I don't want to. <laughs> God can help us sync up with love. Sometimes we have to just show up and see what God can do with us. What if we came to church with the hope that we could open to how God might do something with us, surprise us, reboot us, be our pacemaker? You know, I get to sing with the choir, and sometimes when we're singing and rehearsing songs, we're a little off either tune or rhythm, particularly. And Nikki has the thing when she'll point to one of us or some of us and say, 
just kind of lean in. You kind of lean into the choir as a whole. And as you begin to feel it and absorb it, you can get back on track. Don't stop singing, but kind of pull back a little bit and get yourself in sync with the rest of the group. <laughs> Thirdly, the heart can be weak. It is, after all, a muscle. Disease or poor nutrition or not enough rest or exercise can weaken the heart or genetics. The heart has a huge job and sometimes it doesn't have the stamina for what it needs to do. Our spiritual hearts need to be exercised to stay healthy. Our spiritual hearts have to have a good diet, need nourishment with the right things. The church should be a place where we get to exercise our spiritual muscles, where we grow in strength for service, where our, we, we get the strength to care or to go the extra mile, to be there for someone else, to stand up for justice, for what is right. Sometimes our spiritual heart muscles have been damaged. God can heal that too. The psalmist says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. You know what it's like to do things that are not good for you, but you do them anyway. God can heal that too. God can change even the things we can't talk about or we don't want to think about or share with anyone else. We also have to believe that others can change with God's help. Everyone has a story. Those in prison, somebody next to you at church, on the line at the grocery, at the doctor's office. We all have stories. Paul once said, God's power is made perfect in my weakness. For when I am weak, then I am strong. God can transform every weakness for God's purpose as Joseph Gilbert found, and St. Paul. We live in very challenging times in our community, in Florida, in the world. I can feel that God wants to open up opportunities for us, Suncoast MCC, for us as individuals to use our hearts to help heal the world. Sometimes it feels like all of the conflicts and challenges of the last 50 years are just being revisited right here, right now in 2019. We need to believe that we can face every storm and every challenge by aligning our hearts with God. Touch your neighbor and say, every storm. <laughs> every storm. We can face every storm by aligning our hearts with God. So at this time, before we sing our song of reflection, I wanna do something special and invite you just right where you are in your seat. You may feel like raising your hand. Uh, you may just wanna to touch the hand of someone near you. Or... God, right here and right now, we know this is a place where we can exercise our spiritual muscles. Where we can get back in sync if we felt out of rhythm, out of sync with you, with one another. God, this is a place where if we really need open heart surgery, you can reach right in to our soul and spirit right now. God, I want to pray right now for people in this room who struggle with something they, they can't talk about. Uh, maybe they tried counseling or help or something, but God, I ask that you would just touch that vulnerable place. God, we know that you can change our hearts. God, maybe our heart was hardened towards someone or something. Maybe hurt hardened us. Maybe hurt made it hard for us to forgive or to, to ask for forgiveness. 
God, right here in this place, you are the one who can reach right into our lives and you can help us have a healthier heart filled with your love. God, we know Paul was a difficult customer. He was a tough one for you. <laughs> but God, you were able to touch him and turn him around. I thank you for Joseph and for the many lives of people in prison who never imagined there would be hope and love for them. God, we pray for so many who have nowhere to go with their broken hearts. And we pray that, that they might find this place, <laughs> that we might be a place where broken hearts can be healed. Where the love that you offer through us, through our hands and our hearts in this place, would be enough for someone. Thank you, God, for loving us so much and caring about us so much that you sent Jesus to us, that you gave us a Holy Spirit we could call upon in that midnight hour. God, be with us now as we begin to sing this wonderful song of praise to you. <clears throat> Thank you. 